Ah, okay. Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted today that we are being joined by Vice President of the Republic of Argentina, Gabriela Michetti. It's uh, it's a real pleasure to have you with us um, um, and an honor for us. You're our first senior politician to, to join us. Uh, actually, not quite the first politician because we've already had um, uh, some some politicians before, but the, the first person of, of such a high rank to join us on Access Chat, and we are extremely um, pleased that you can join us because I learned when you came to visit us in London about some of the work that you're doing, and it's it's incredibly impressive, and uh, we're very excited to bring together the the communities that that have formed around disability inclusion, including the stuff that you've been doing in Argentina through uh, Vidas Reales. So if we can take a step back, can you please tell us uh, about your journey with disability and, and how you came to be engaged in the programs that you're now engaged in? Okay, thank you for your for your ask, uh, questions. Eh, la verdad es que mi compromiso con, con la discapacidad eh, en el término del, o en el, en el campo de las políticas públicas eh, tiene menos tiempo que eh, mi situación de discapacidad. O sea, cuando yo tuve mi accidente eh, de auto hace alrededor de 24 años, Eh, trabajaba como licenciada en Relaciones Internacionales y era una técnica eh, en el Estado, en el sector público y no tenía ni idea de lo que significan las políticas para la discapacidad. No, no, no estaba eh, para nada eh, cercana a ese campo. Sin embargo, cuando pasaron los años y hice el salto de salir de la el perfil técnico en el sector público y pasar al perfil político en, y empecé a, tra a trabajar en un partido político eh, y rápidamente pudimos un partido político nuevo que eh, rápidamente pudo ganar la, el gobierno de la Ciudad de Buenos Aires y ahora el gobierno nacional, ahí es cuando comencé a comprometerme eh, con las políticas públicas de la discapacidad. Y entonces empecé a estudiar sobre el tema, a leer, a ver, eh, a sentir, a todo. Y, y todo comenzó en Londres, en, un, en un, eh, una especie de curso muy intensivo que hacían las Naciones Unidas con el gobierno de Inglaterra. Y entonces, en el año 2006, fui allá y, estu y estuve unos días en Londres estudiando estas cuestiones. Very well. So, um, truth be told, my actual engagement uh, in the field of disabilities, especially as regards public policies on disabilities, is actually more recent than my own disability situation, uh, which uh, had to do with a car accident I was involved in some 24 years ago. Until then, my um, work really had to do more with uh, my degree in international relations. I was actually a technical specialist uh, working for the government and um, in the public sector, but as a technician. I really had no idea uh, of policies on disabilities. I wasn't really close to that particular field. But um, years later came that leap, let's say, from the technical side of things to the more political profile as part of my work in a new uh, political party. And uh, this was the party that uh, first won the elections for the mayoral um, elections of the city of Buenos Aires and then went on to win the uh, national elections. And that was when I really became engaged uh, with regard to public policies on disabilities because I actually got to study uh, the subject, I got to read about it, and I actually got to feel um, what this was all about. And I could even say that this actually started in London. This had to do 
with a course that was being uh, run by the uh, UN and hosted by the UK government. This was also in 2006, so I spent a couple of days over there and I had a chance to study and learn about the subject. Thank you very much. So, um, when you last visited London, um, we talked a little bit about um, the work that Argentina is doing to promote the inclusion of disabilities, uh, both in education and in work. But for our audience, are you able to tell us um, s some more about the, the, the programs that you have going on in, in your country to promote uh, inclusion in education and work? Más información sobre los programas que se están haciendo, haciendo en Argentina para la inclusión en la educación. Lo, lo primero que, que decidí hacer cuando tomé la, digamos, la, junto con el presidente, la idea y la iniciativa de eh, hacer un cambio en la política para la discapacidad, porque en realidad. Más, bueno, en realidad no, no un cambio, sino, digamos, hacer una política eh, para la discapacidad a nivel... Lo primero que, que decidí fue eh, ver el marco institucional del que partíamos. Cómo estaba la política para la discapacidad o las medidas que se tomaban o, o los, los ámbitos donde había eh, algo que, que se relacionaba con, con políticas de discapacidad en el Estado, en los distintos ministerios. Y la verdad es que esto eh, fue un diagnóstico eh, realmente duro, eh, difícil de entender, porque la verdad es que había muchísima dispersión, eh, mucha falta de coordinación, eh, no había un lugar donde se centralizara la política de discapacidad y se pudiera, un organismo donde se pudiera realmente... Eh, direccionar, eh, regir, eh, ¿cómo se dice? Hacer, hacer la rectoría de las políticas públicas en discapacidad. Entonces, lo primero fue crear un organismo con muchísima jerarquía, porque lo pusimos a la altura de la presidencia de la nación, en el organismo del Estado, en el, organi el, or en el, perdón, en el organigrama del Estado, y entonces, eh, a partir de ahí, ese organismo que se llama Agencia Nacional de Discapac para la Discapacidad, ese organismo es el que centraliza todas las políticas que existían, o las medidas que existían, y las que vamos tomando nuevas. Voy a, a parar un poquito acá y después sigo. So the first decision we made um, with the president when we took office had to do with... Um, embracing this idea or initiative of bringing about a change in terms of the policy on disabilities, or I would even say not even changing the policies, but actually making, creating a policy nationwide. So the first thing we did was take a look at the institutional framework that we had at the time. It was basically about taking stock of the existing policies and the measures that existed within the uh, state uh, and obviously looking at each individual ministry so as to have a diagnosis and I must say that the outcome of that diagnosis was quite sobering. It was really hard to understand how things had become so scattered, how there could be such a lack of coordination since there was actually no centralization of policies. There was, so to speak, no go-to agency that would take care of supervising and governing the policies on disabilities. So the decision we made was to create a body at a very uh, senior level within the vice president's office. And we actually incorporated that into the government structure uh, officially. This is the uh, National Agency on Disabilities, which has the mandate of centralizing all of the matters uh, relating to both the older established policies and the newer policies that we are putting into place. And I will stop here and now carry on. Okay. 
Y, y a partir de, de hacer un diseño institucional distinto, entonces definimos un plan para eh, trabajar junto con los estados federales, porque ustedes saben que Argentina es un país federal, junto con los estados federales, que aquí se llaman provincias, eh, y trabajar junto también con, las, eh, con los municipios, con los, por, por lo menos con los municipios más grandes. Entonces, lo primero que hicimos es un, un eh, diálogo eh, de seis meses aproximadamente en todo el país con las ONGs, con las personas, o sea, ONGs de perfil eh, claramente sobre la discapacidad, con las personas con discapacidad, con los gobiernos, eh, todos juntos, trabajando un diálogo nacional para ver hacia dónde queríamos ir con el tema de la discapacidad. Eso fue lo primero. Luego construimos, con ese diálogo, construimos el Plan Nacional de Discapacidad, que está basado en cuatro pilares fundamentales. La educación, la inclusión a través de la educación, la inclusión a través del empleo, del trabajo, la inclusión a través de la accesibilidad, no solo arquitectónica, sino también de barreras digitales, por ejemplo, y eh, la última es la salud, la, la inclusión a partir de la prestación de buenas eh, prestaciones, bueno, eh, al revés, a ver, la, la, las prestaciones de salud de calidad para que realmente también haya inclusión con esa política. So, based on the new institutional design we put into place, we established a program uh, of work with the provinces. You know, Argentina is a federal country, so the individual states are called provinces here. And we um, set to work with the local governments, at least with the larger municipalities. And we uh, engaged in this conversation. It was a, a process of dialogue that lasted for about six months. And this included uh, such stakeholders as uh, NGOs that had a particular expertise or that were relevant to the field of disabilities. We actually engaged persons with disabilities, different governments uh, throughout the country. So all together, we engaged in, in this as to see where exactly we wanted to go with our national policies on on, based on that, the uh, national program or plan on disabilities, which consisted of a number of pillars. The first pillars being uh, the second one through education, also inclusion through uh, working, through work, through employment, jobs, also through accessibility. In other words, the idea was to foster and enhance accessibility but not only in terms of physical or architectural barriers, but also dealing with the digital barriers and also ensuring that we improved inclusion through the provision of good quality healthcare services, all of which we thought would definitely promote the goal of inclusion. Provision of good quality healthcare services all so, of which we thought would definitely Looking back to the, to the work that you, you have done, and it will be interesting first to know what impact quality uh, you, you have observed. All of which we thought would definitely Looking back to the, to the work that you, you have done, and it will be interesting first to know what impact what impact what type of impact uh, we were able to achieve in the public sector what type of impact we were able to achieve in the public sector we have a terrible sound problem antonio uh, now 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 it's, it's, I, I, I didn't hear nothing. No. Uh, I now I I think uh, now it's, now it's better. Can you 
can you um, uh, repeat the, the question, question, please? Okay. I think uh, no, no. it's better. Okay. Can you can you um, uh, repeat, repeat the, the question, question, please? Okay. I think. I'm, I'm going to mute Antonio because it's Antonio's end that is causing the feedback. So Antonio was asking what the impact has been, particularly on uh, work in the private sector uh, of your initiatives so far. Okay. Okay. Eh, lo primero que tengo para decirles es que eh, hace muy poco tiempo que hemos comenzado con este, eh, con este mo gran movimiento eh, en políticas para Argentina. Entonces, eh, nosotros tenemos dos años y medio que está eh, administrando el Estado. Entonces comenzamos con esto hace eh, aproximadamente eh, un año y medio, y nos tomó eh, seis meses el diálogo nacional, luego eh, hacer los cambios burocráticos que tenemos que hacer eh, y que estamos haciendo en este momento, al todavía el sobre el sector lo estamos empezando a conocer. ¿Cómo? A través de un programa que hacemos en el Ministerio de Trabajo que tiene que ver con capacitar a las personas con discapacidad que tienen eh, deseos de incluirse en el mundo laboral y que no tienen capacidades específicas para poder presentarse eh, con su... Curriculum y metemos escapado como la ley en la Argentina obliga a las empresas proveedoras del Estado a tener un 4% de personas con discapacidad empleadas. Lo que hemos comenzado a hacer es conversar, sensibilizar a las empresas proveedoras primero del Estado para que ellas den el ejemplo y podamos, en términos de dos años aproximadamente, o tres, cumplir con ese 4% de personas que ellos tienen que eh, contratar y que, y que tienen que tener, eh, son personas con discapacidad. Porque hasta ahora eso no se había cumplido. O, 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 papel de que no tenía ninguna ningún en, en la sociedad. The first thing I'd like to mention is that we have only recently launched this major drive related to policies on disabilities in Argentina. After all, we have been in office, our administration has been in office for two and a half years, um, and we started a year and a half this national out about took about six months uh, so we first had to go about all the admin uh, bureaucratic changes that are still underway to some extent so it is only now that we are starting to see the actual impact on the private sector and also by means of a program that we have through the Ministry of Labor of Argentina which um, has the goal of um, disabilities who are looking forward to working and who perhaps do not have these sorts of specific skills or they can't actually advertise in their CVs the sort of requirements that would normally be uh, desirable for a particular position. So then what we first do is we train these people and by the way there is a law in Argentina which makes it mandatory for um, companies and um, what we call state vendors, in other words, those contracting with the Argentine government, to have at least 4% of their personnel um, 
being uh, persons with disabilities. So there is that quota that is required. And so that's what we started to do. We began to work on raising awareness among these uh, government vendors so that in two or three years' time, we should be able to actually reach that uh, 4% quota of persons with disabilities working at these uh, businesses. Because the fact is that so far, even though the law existed, it really hadn't had any actual impact because the um, steps that were required by it had not been uh, carried out as required. Hello, Gabriella. My name is Deborah Rue, and I'm, I'm joining from the United States, from Virginia. And I want to thank you for the leadership that you're showing in Argentina, because I think the rest of the world can learn so much from the work that you're doing there in Argentina. Thank so you. I was just curious, uh, are you finding that corporations, and including multinational corporations, are really joining your efforts to make sure that people with disabilities are included in the workforce and helping to make that 4% goal um, a reality? Are the corporations coming behind you and really supporting you? En, la, en las primeras conversaciones que hemos ido teniendo con las empresas, eh, la, la recepción de, de este camino que les estamos proponiendo, esta propuesta de ir hacia ese 4% y cumplir con la ley eh, de una vez por todas y no tener esa ley muerta eh, que, que es tan, eh, tan eh, eh, decepcionante y tan frustrante, eh, la verdad es que las primeras respuestas han sido muy buenas. Eh, hemos tenido incluso empresas que no son proveedoras del Estado, que se han enterado, que han tomado conocimiento del tema y que quieren también participar como eh, empresas líderes eh, en, esta, en este benchmark de eh, tener un porcentaje de personas con discapacidad incluidas en su, eh, en su staff de, de trabajadores. Well, actually, the uh, first talks we had with uh, corporations really um, were met with a warm welcome um, by the companies in terms of this path that we have been proposing. I mean, this idea of actually hitting the 4% mark once and for all, instead of having just a law that is basically dead letter, which is rather disappointing and frustrating. And I must say that the initial responses were really very good. And um, in fact, some companies that are not even uh, government vendors as such have stated their interest in, their interest, uh, in um, joining us as part of this uh, project and also their interest in becoming champions, if you like, of um, achieving this uh, 4% component of persons with disabilities in their own workforce. Creo, I, perdón, creo que para muchas empresas que tienen visión y que son eh, administradas por jóvenes eh, eh, que están empapados, que, están, que son conocedores de, de las temáticas eh, de la agenda global, para muchas de esas empresas el hecho de participar de, esta, de este camino, de esta propuesta que estamos haciendo a la sociedad y al sector privado es eh, muy que ellos ven para justamente aumentar rentabilidad, porque cuando una empresa se conecta y genera una empatía con la sociedad, la sociedad también eh, responde a esa empresa y a esa marca. I believe um, for many companies with a vision and uh, companies which are often run by young 
entrepreneurs who are well aware of the um, issues on the global agenda participating in this path uh, and joining us as part of this proposal to both the community as a whole and to the private sector specifically becomes very important even to raise their own profits because you see when you as a company engage and when you build empathy that is also good for your companies and your businesses in terms of building up your popularity i i agree I, and I think that the corporations that are including people with disabilities in their workforce, not only is it good for your country in Argentina, but it is good for their bottom line. And I think a lot of the countries around the world are watching what countries like Argentina are doing to really blend people with disabilities throughout your society, out throughout your society. So compliments to the work that you've started and I think that the, the rest of the world is going to watch very eagerly to see the successes that we know that you're going to make. And of course, we're here to support you. So compliments to your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have another question and, and yeah. that is, uh, yes, can you hear me? Okay. So the, the, the next question is, I, I know you're engaged already in social media efforts in, in, um, through Las Vegas Reales, um, and the production values of what you're doing is fantastic. You've got a, a really good group of um, people working on that, and it seems like you've built a, a really great community. I'd like to learn a little bit more about that, but also um, think about how we can bring together both the English language speaking community and the Spanish language speaking communities, because uh, these are two huge blocks of, of uh, language blocks of, of people with disabilities throughout the world that we're stronger together, but we need to come together because at the moment uh, there's lots of stuff going on, but we're not aware of what's going on in uh, e each other's languages. <laughs> Es, es eh, interesante tu pregunta porque nosotros con, este, con esta iniciativa de vidas reales, lo que justamente queremos hacer es que existan espacios, ámbitos de la comunicación que, que vayan más allá de nuestro país y que nos permitan una, una conversación global sobre la discapacidad porque... Eh, la posibilidad de abrirse al mundo y de tener una conversación global con estos, en estos temas realmente mejora muchísimo la performance eh, de cualquier iniciativa que uno haga dentro del país. Entonces, ¿qué es Vidas Reales? Es un ámbito de comunicación, es un medio de comunicación, eh, obviamente a través de las nuevas tecnologías, no es un medio de comunicación tradicional, en el cual contamos historias comunes de personas comunes. Eh, las personas con discapacidad tenemos vidas que, que son como las personas sin discapacidad. Entonces lo que tratamos es de contar no vidas de héroes, o de, o de gente súper, este, no sé, como, como superhéroes, este, sino que realmente contamos vidas de personas que tienen discapacidad, niños, adultos, eh, adultos mayores, que, que son inspiradoras y que de alguna manera, <coughs> perdón, y que de alguna manera generan y disparan conversación que conecta a los anglosajones con, digamos, el mundo anglosajón o parlante y el mundo parlante hispano parlante, digamos, ¿no? Well, that's a very interesting question you have asked, because through the Vidas Reales initiative, precisely what we are aiming at doing is to open opportunities and to create forum 
of communication beyond our own borders to enable a global conversation on disabilities. By opening up to the world, we can enable this global conversation, which we think can improve the performance we may be running in our own country. So we could say that Vidas Realis is a non-traditional initiative in that it relies to a very a great extent on a communication a technologies, on modern technologies. And what it does is really to tell the stories, ordinary stories, about ordinary people. So um, it's really um, to highlight the fact that um, the lives of us people with disabilities are not really any different from the lives of people who do not have uh, disabilities. Um, we're not telling the stories of heroes or of superheroes. These are just the lives of kids, of adults, of senior citizens, uh, stories that are inspiring and that I think trigger and uh, launch a conversation and a discussion that stretches across. Quiero contarles que en el término de seis meses hemos llegado por Facebook con vidas reales, con este medio de comunicación no tradicional, hemos llegado a 12 millones de personas. Y semanalmente, un millón y medio de personas participan poniendo un comentario o un like en eh, las, los posts que nosotros hacemos. And let me tell you, in just six months on Facebook, through uh, Vidas Reales, this non-traditional initiative we are talking about, we managed to reach 12 million people and every week we get one and a half million people participating either through comments or through likes um, on the posts that we put up. And people participating either So uh, when we look at people participating, I when we look at all that type of uh, engagement, uh, it's almost like if we see the society so, uh, was waiting for that to happen. People participating, I when we look at all that type of uh, engagement, uh, it's almost like if we see the society so, uh, was waiting for that to happen. People participating. So, what can I you tell us about type of, uh, those engagement. likes and um, the, the, like the comments that you are getting from Argentinians in relation to the work that you are doing. What can you tell us about Can you repeat the question, please? Because I, I didn't... Or, or Neil. I, I didn't hear it, Julia. Yeah. yeah. yeah you repeat it. So... so, so, so um, Antonio was asking about um, the, the uh, how are you finding people are participating uh, in in the Vidas Reales um, online? Is it changing people's attitudes towards people with disabilities because uh, of greater visibility through channels like Facebook? Um, because we're, we're amazed at your figures, they're, they're fantastic, and we've been amazed at the engagement we've had through Access Chat too. It's um, far exceeded the expectations we had when we started our, our initiatives. Ok, la verdad es que claramente eh, este instrumento que, que de, diseñamos como nuevo eh, medio de comunicación que solo habla de la discapacidad, eh, nos, nos superó las expectativas. 
claramente nosotros sabíamos que podíamos generar una conversación global interesante sobre la discapacidad, pero nunca pensamos que iba a ser tan rápido que tuviéramos estos eh, impactos. Lo que hacemos es... Eh, que sabemos pueden impactar para sensibilizar a las personas con la cultura que les llamamos nosotros cultura de la discapacidad, que es la inclusión de todas las personas eh, en la sociedad como personas, no como discapacitados. Well, um, clearly, this new instrument that we have um, created and found on a disability has certainly exceeded our own expectations in that we knew that um, we would have a, a global impact in terms of, of uh, generating that conversation of impact. The basis of this is that the capacities or capabilities of social networks have made it possible for us to uh, seek to include contents that we know or expect will uh, sensitize people and raise awareness among people vis-a-vis -vis, uh, vis -vis what we call a disability culture. In other words, it's about including people just as that, as people, not as disabled people. That, that's a, a great point and I was in Dublin last week with the International Paralympic Committee and they were focusing along with their partners on how we can as organizations that support parasport also just bring people together and see uh, people with disabilities not for the disability but for their abilities. Um, I, I know we've taken a lot of your time this afternoon. It's been a really great pleasure to, to interview you today. Uh, we need to thank uh, Elaine and my clear text for helping us with the captions, you for your great efforts uh, so far, um, and wish to applaud you for all the work you're doing and wish you great future success on your programs. And also thank Barclays for continuing to support us and keeping Access Chat going because uh, without the support of our community, we wouldn't be able to share with your community. Thank you so much for all of your efforts so far today and for uh, coming and joining us on Access Chat. Thank you very much uh, because you are now, um, ¿cómo se dice? Acompañándonos. Supporting us, supporting us, supporting us uh, in this uh, change, cultural change that uh, we we want to to do. Uh, it's very important for us uh, to to dialogue uh, with you. Uh, thank you very much, and and we are together to to change the the world. Thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure to have you on with us this, this afternoon, Vice President Michetti. Thank you again. Bye-bye. 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 Gracias.